I'm Kevin, otherwise known as Forum BX257, here to bring you another 1980s G.I. Joe toy review. And this week on my 1988 Iron Grenadiers theme month, I'll be taking a look at Destro's General, Voltar. Now, Voltar makes his first appearance in the old Marvel comic run of G.I. Joe's spin-off, Special Missions number 18, and then makes his first appearance in the regular title in issue 87. He doesn't make any cartoon appearances, unfortunately. Uh, one thing that's very odd about the character is that, well, Destro already had a second-in-command called the Sergeant Major, which was, of course, introduced in the comic books. And as soon as Voltar appeared, the Sergeant Major kind of dis disappeared. So I'm guessing that was kind of a Hasbro toy decision versus a Larry Hammer writing decision. One other interesting thing is he, um, the, the actual toy comes with a uh, Condor, which isn't named on the uh, contents list or on the file card, and unfortunately did not make any appearances in the comic book either. Voltar here comes with three accessories. We'll take a look at his primary weapon first. What the contents list of the car calls a modified Uzi submachine gun, of all things. 1988 uh, started this trend where they either just didn't detail what the accessories were properly, or they just were just plain wrong. I mean, obviously this isn't any type of Uzi. Uh, Uzis generally have their ammunition uh, in the grip, and they're usually stick magazines at that, so this uh, banana clip kind of reminds me of some type of a other type of submachine gun or carbine or something. It's really, uh, it's really an interesting design because it's uh, fairly contemporary, except for this weird fin at the back. The other accessory he comes with is the High Frequency Communications Backpack. I know a lot of people put this backpack on him like this and well there's there really isn't um, a sort of a, an inner piece where it would be molded to the, the uh, small of his back to show you exactly uh, which orientation to put the backpack in and this looks quite logical there's like a handle here and this antenna going up I mean it is a communications backpack you'd expect the antenna to stick up straight However, if you check out the artwork on his card, it, act, it, act, it is actually sideways. And finally, Voltar comes with a Condor, which is unfortunately not named on the file card or on the contents list. As a matter of fact, the name Voltar kind of reminds me of Vulture, which is what I think this is. I think the... Um, Vultures and condors are kind of a related bird species. And instead of having the uh, foot clip on the guy's wrist, you can just have it right on the, uh, the antenna here, like a perch. Despite a really well done figure, the collectors really take issue with this particular action figure because of two main reasons. One of which is his color scheme. Now he has a lot of black and gold on him, which is an Iron Grenadier color, certainly, but he doesn't have the prominent red either. Instead he has this fuchsia, or dark pink. Now, I understand that gold and dark pink is a very oriental color, which goes with the sort of art deco look that they're trying to go with here. But a lot of people tend to think of uh, pink as being a very feminine color, which is really only a, a modern concept, and you can probably thank Barbie doll for that. The other thing is that a lot of people tend to think of him in the comic books, where he seems to pop out of nowhere and then just get killed in issue 98. But the, the truth of the matter is, is that he actually does have a very good turn in G.I. Joe's special missions in which he is primarily uh, responsible for the death of many of the original October Guardsmen. 
Voltar has a lot of classic sci-fi uh, designs here, very Art Deco, what with his spikes, his oriental color scheme, as I said before, the, the black uh, gloves and boots, as well as his helmet with the space age fin on the top here. You'll notice that he does have this, uh, I guess, mechanical eye here. According to the comic book, he had two good eyes, so that was just something that was on his helmet. Now, it's hard for me to recommend this figure on, because on the aftermarket, even though he's a very common figure, it's really hard to find this figure with his accessories intact. Unfortunately, we have two accessories which are prone to gold plastic syndrome. The gold plastic that Hasbro used for these has a sort of a swirly pattern in here which over a very short period of time becomes very brittle. So you'll often find his weapon with either the entire handle just sort of cracked off or the silencer part of his weapon cracked off. Then there's also his backpack which has numerous spots which crack off. The, the handle, which I don't recommend putting in the hand, that's often cracked off. The antenna slash perch can be cracked off. And worse yet, the back peg can crack off fairly easily. So if that cracks off, uh, particularly in the back, not only do you have no access to the screw, but the backpack becomes useless. And then on top of that, there's the bird, because uh, the Hasbro manufactured these birds with pegs, which pegged into the uh, body. So this isn't just one solid piece. So if the peg cracks off, you'll often just find the bird just like this on the aftermarket with no feet at all. Now it seems poor old Voltar just can't catch a break, neither his character nor his action figure. Well, that's all the time I have right now. Please check out my Facebook page for more information and behind the scenes photos for these reviews. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for next time to see another 1980s G.I. Joe tour review. See you then.